data lake to Synapse Link. Today's session is part one of a series by the same name. My name is Rich Black and I will be your moderator today. We'll be broadcasting this session through Teams Live event. The session is being recorded on behalf of Microsoft Corporation. So presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Melinda Vitharana, Principal Product Manager, and Jill Ayada, Principal Solution Architect. Now, before I hand it over to them, let's take a quick look at the topics for each session in this series. Today, we're going to cover the overview of Synapse Link for Dataverse and the transition process there. In tomorrow's session, we're going to change the agenda a little bit and you'll receive updated invitations. We'll update the Tech Talk page a little bit as indicated here on screen. Tomorrow, we're going to cover architecture patterns and virtual data warehousing in which we'll explore patterns. We'll get started with virtual data warehousing using Synapse Link. In the subsequent session, which is scheduled for November 16th, we'll explore cloud data warehousing, including incremental data ingestion. And then finally, on November 21st, we're gonna cover lake house architecture and working with transformation, transformation of data using Spark Notebook. So with that uh, said, let me hand it over to Melinda to get us started. Thank you, Rich. Um, good morning. Uh, good afternoon and good evening, everyone. If you're watching this recording later, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining. So here's what we're going to walk through today, JJ and I. Uh, first of all, let's just try to get to the common common understanding of what is Synapse Link for Dataverse. And then let's also talk about Microsoft Fabric, how Dynamics and Dataverse connects to Microsoft Fabric. But of course, you know, there's a transition, there's an upgrade process, and then you get the benefits of Microsoft Fabric and so many great things that are coming. So let's spend a little bit of time understanding what the transition looks like. And of course, uh, call to action, you know, your homework, what can you do? Where can you learn more? Uh, we'll walk through that as well. So this is the first of a series of sessions on this, and we're going to share a whole bunch of links and resources today. You know, certainly there's few additional sessions, which are deep dives uh, that you uh, are welcome to attend as well. So with that, let's get started. So the simplest way to think about Synapse Link for Dataverse is it is a single experience to work with all Dynamics data for analytics. Let me explain. If you've been with the Dynamics community for some time, you know that we are on a quest to unify all these different Dynamics products under one umbrella, under one low-code platform, and enable you to work with not only the financial and operations uh, tools or sales or customer service or pro dev tools. The idea is we, we bring all these tools, all these great products under one platform, the power platform. And Dataverse is the platform behind all that power. So if you have Dynamics 365, whether it's FNL or sales or customer service, you already have Dataverse. Dataverse is powering your, your application. If you're using Power Apps for application development, if you're using Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents, Power Pages, Power Stuff, Dataverse is already there. And Dataverse is more than just a database. It has many databases, of course, but it also has capabilities that powers business logic, analytics, integration, so many features built into one platform. So that's what Dataverse is. Now, Synapse Link for Dataverse essentially is a one-click experience, single-click experience, with which you can select all data from Dynamics, continuously export that data into your data lake, and certainly work with Synapse and other tools. So the idea, uh, what we wanted to do really, is to eliminate the pain in working with your data using analytics tools. So I'm sure you're aware, but Synapse Link for Dataverse now supports finance and operations data. So essentially we have one experience to work with all data, including finance and operations. So Finance and operations data in Synapse Link Dataverse is generally available. It has been generally available since early September. So I've been talking for a few minutes. Let's see a demo of finance and operations data in Synapse Link. JJ, do you want to take over? Thanks, Melinda. So let me share my screen. So here I'm sharing the lifecycle services. Um, you know, so the customers or uh, users who are familiar with the uh, finance and operations uh, environment. Uh, 
knows the LCS. This is the admin portal for managing your uh, environment um, and, and all. Uh, and this is the piece where you basically also export, uh, 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 enable export data leak add-in. So I have this environment where the export data leak add-in is already installed. I want to show that like the Synapse link can coexist with the export to data links. That's the one thing. Um, uh, so export to data leak is already enabled. Uh, one thing you'll notice that this uh, your LCS is already linked with finance and operation uh, in a uh, power platform. Uh, power platform information, integration information is shared here. Uh, you can see these environments name and all that details. Uh, to enable the Synapse link, uh, for FNO data, uh, finance and operations data, one thing you have to do into the finance and operation is turn on a configuration key. Uh, this is listed in the documentation as well. Uh, the configuration key is named as SQL row origin change tracking. Um, so this is a prerequisite to enable that. Um, and then to enable and set up the Synapse link for data wars, you'll basically go to um, uh, make.power apps.com this is the maker portal of the power app uh, so this is the kind of a uh, 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 the maker experience for the power platform users um, and so the experience of the setting of the synapse link uh, is basically going to be from the make.powerplatform.com here you will first select a uh, environment uh, so i have selected the environment which is linked to my finance and operation environment as you can see here this is the finance cds I selected the finance CDS environment and you will see Azure Synapse link in here. Uh, the experience of creating a Synapse link is a simple one-click process, a uh, few-click process. Um, as you can see here, I click the new link uh, here. I don't have to create the key vault and all those kind uh, of things which I have to do in the uh, export to data lake. What I can do here is just simply, uh, 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 you know, uh, select my resource group, uh, the Synapse workspace, uh, and uh, I have uh, to use the Delta. Uh, we'll talk about some of these things as well. Uh, so use the Spark pool to bring the Delta conversions, and I select my storage account. Uh, here also, you'll notice that there is a select enterprise policy with managed services. This is a security feature. So with the Synapse link, you can also now bring the uh, secure firewall, uh, you know, storage account, uh, and Synapse link will be able to connect to that. Uh, so there is documentation of how set, how to set up the enterprise policy with the managed service identity. Uh, you can select that. Uh, the next experience as you can see here is, uh, you know is you will be able to set up the frequency that right now the minimum frequency here is 15 minutes. So I can set up the frequency. I can click uh, select data wars data like the CE uh, or uh, other uh, sales CE marketing data as well as the finance and operations data in this list. So the, all the tables which has the row version change tracking enables appear in this list. I can just select these tables and save and this will basically create uh, all the so this is a kind of installation experience as well as selection experience uh, so this is a simplest unified experience to uh, enable the synapse link for uh, your fno data as well as the data wars data i have already done that like once the profile is set up uh, i can go here and see that what what tables are running um uh, you know, so this this shows all the tables which has uh, been active in this environment. It will also show the the tables which are currently initializing. Um, so similar experience as uh, export to data link. Uh, you know, you, there is an initial sync in progress, and once the tables are there, it's become active. Uh, this this information is all available here. The record count uh, and all those informations. You will also have the details about what file systems like storage account is connected, what Synapse workspace is connected, uh, and all those things, uh, the configurations which you have selected um, in the Synapse link. So all that information is available. You can also, not only that, you can also uh, select this and click these buttons, go to Azure Data Lake and go to Azure Synapse workspace to jump right into the, uh, the Data Lake and Synapse workspace to query the data. And notice that, like you know, we don't have to set up uh, any things like CDM util and things like that. Uh, you know, it's all there. 
let me just go back a little bit into the data lake. Like if I go to data lake where my profile is set up, what I can see here is uh, the data is being exported uh, in the data lake. Uh, I have uh, these folders uh, where the CSV data reside, incremental CSV data, and then Delta Lake folder is there in my data lake where uh, the Delta converted data is uh, is uh, uh, stored. You you notice that these, these partition Castrans partition folders, the data is partitioned here by year. Uh, so you have uh, you know the parquet file in here, uh, you know. Uh, uh, and the data is partitioned in native temp folders. We'll, we'll talk about some of these benefits, like how some of these things improvise the, uh, you know, the the query experience and all that in the synapse. But that's this is all kind of a uh, integrated. The next thing we have is uh, uh, the, in the synapse side. Uh, on on the synapse side, uh, it automatically going to create a database, leak database. Um, um, and uh, have all the tables which are there, uh, which you have enabled, available in the Synapse uh, workspace as a database. Uh, and Synapse allow you to query the data using the eSQL or a Spark. Uh, so here as an example, I'm selecting the, you know, the cust group tables, uh, which uh, I exported, uh, you know, uh, using this uh, uh, Synapse uh, serverless, uh, the, the query engine. Uh, behind it, and then you know, basically, is showing the result. So the first time it may uh, little, take a little bit time, but second time onward, because this uh, data is kind of a, all the things is cached, it will uh, it will be uh, faster. I can also use again uh, notebooks, uh, which is the a Spark experience, and I can uh, query the same data, you know, without having to do anything using the Spark notebook. So so the data is in the lake is now available in the Delta Lake format. It can be accessible with the serverless, and it can be accessible with the, uh, you know, uh, Spark notebooks uh, and, and things like that, right? Uh, so that's the, the 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 first part of this. There is more. Um, many customers uh, who uh, basically set up uh, uh, use the export of data leak today are using the change feed features, uh, right? So many times you may need to uh, move the data from you know, data lake back to Azure SQL or SQL Server on-prem um, and then some of those scenario. And we'll cover some of those things in the deep dive. But here's another experience I want to show. When you're selecting the, uh, creating a Synapse link, you can basically uh, not, uh, you can just skip selecting connect to Azure Synapse workspace uh, and just give uh, a, uh, a storage account um, and uh, a storage account, a resource group and a storage account, and that's it. So this, and now also you can select FNO tables, data verse tables, same experience. Uh, you can also enable that interval frequency, uh, 15 minutes, uh, and you know you can add tables here. What happened with this, like you have not selected the Spark pool for conversions, you have not selected uh, a Synapse workspace. In this scenarios, what will happen is the data, incremental data will basically uh, show up in your data lake. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I have enabled this already. So uh, as you can see here, cust group, uh, there is incremental CSV data available uh, here. Uh, I, I have the model.json file, uh, which basically describes the schema of this CSV. Now I can incrementally take this data and sync this to Azure SQL, other services, and so on. So don't worry, uh, we have a deep dive sessions on all of these things, you know, how, how you can use, uh, you know, uh, the Delta Lake data uh, using the Synapse serverless, or how you can integrate with the uh, with the with the Azure SQL. So we'll cover some of those things in the deep dive sessions. But this is a kind of an overview how to set up, how to configure, and then uh, you know uh, use this uh, uh, Synapse Link features with the finance and operations data. So that was my demo. Over to you, Melinda. Thank you, JJ. So you've seen how Synapse Link to Dataverse works with finance and operations data. So essentially what we've done is we've given one way to work with all your data, but you should think of Synapse Link as the first step. There's a lot of great things that are going to come next. You may have heard of Microsoft Fabric. 
which is an evolution of Power BI and Synapse together. By onboarding to Synapse Link for Dataverse, you essentially open the door for a lot of innovations that are going to come. And I'm going to talk about one of them. So what you can expect is, you know, Microsoft Fabric, essentially, um, you know, if you look at Synapse, Synapse Link, it's a, it's a data engineer. It's a more of an ETL, pro dev kind of an experience. There's a lot of things that you need to know. But Microsoft Fabric brings that skill level down. You can do a lot without being a pro dev or a pro data engineer. Essentially, there are a lot of things that as a data analyst that you can do. So Microsoft Fabric makes it super easy to work with the data and it enables more and more uh, folks in your organizations to use the data. So um, what we are what we are going to do is to enable two-way integration with Microsoft Fabric and your data in Dataverse from Dynamics. So let's just see what that what that means. Now I've talked about Microsoft Fabric. Um, essentially, it's in public preview right now. It's going to reach GA soon. Uh, Microsoft Fabric is a SaaS software as a service platform, completely cloud-based. It brings together all these great things that you're familiar with, including Power BI, Synapse Data Warehouse, Data Factory, Data Activator, some of the new products. But it's also based on this single data platform called OneLink. Now, Dynamics 365 data in Power Platform on Microsoft Fabric, they pretty much integrate together in a two-way integration. So the idea is all the AI-driven insights that are enabled inside Microsoft Fabric. Now you're going to be able to use those capabilities with Dynamics data. Of course, you're probably familiar with Power Platform. You, some of you may be building Power Apps app also. So the idea is that it's a circle. So you can take Dynamics data, work with that data in Fabric without having to copy that data, without having to build pipelines. Now you can use Microsoft Fabric to combine, use Spark, SQL, data warehouses, combine with your other data. Now. Uh, of course, Microsoft Fabric makes it super easy for you to, um, you know, work with that data. But the idea is with those insights that you find, you can come back and build Power Apps again without having to copy that data back again. So essentially what we have done is through Synapse Link, we've enabled you all the innovations that are coming in Microsoft Fabric. Um, you know, now it's within your reach. So let's play a quick video just to show you the flavor of things to come. So Microsoft Platform. Power Platform, Microsoft Fabric, all the Dynamics data is there. So it's essentially data from Dataverse becomes available in Microsoft Fabric. Now, with the insights in Microsoft Fabric, you can work with those insights and those tables in Power Platform, in Dataverse. You can build Power Apps, you can build automations. And here's how it works. So you can choose the Analyze option in the Maker Portal, and this wizard will launch. It'll do some prereqs, like for an example, if there's a if there's a connection, it'll help you create a connection straight away from here. Now, once you create a secure connection, um, that's it. You can now select a workspace in Microsoft Fabric with which you're gonna link data from this environment. You can create a workspace or pick one. That's pretty much it. So the system then initializes it, creates a connection, and all your data becomes securely available in Microsoft Fabric. So authorized users can work with that data in Microsoft Fabric without actually having to copy it. Now, Microsoft Fabric provides a lot of capabilities we talked about, like SQL for an example. So you can work with SQL, you can work with Spark. You can essentially work with all the tools inside Microsoft Fabric. Now with all these insights, what you can do is you can actually access that data from Microsoft Fabric. So when you go into this virtual entity wizard, you will see the ability to connect to Microsoft Fabric. So you can pick a Microsoft Fabric workspace, you can pick a lake house, you can pick a data warehouse. Essentially, what you can do is pick tables from Microsoft Fabric, Microsoft One Lake, and the system will help you to create a virtual table. So virtual tables is a concept that's in Dataverse. So essentially, all your data in Microsoft Fabric, now you can work with that data using virtual tables. So once you create a virtual table, of course, building an app or a power page or an automation is super easy. So here in this example, we just created uh, a simple app, a tablet app, using the insights that you have found inside Microsoft Fabric. And of course, it just works like a model-driven app, super easy to do. 
So um, if you think about it, the first thing that we've done is we actually enabled FNO data in Synapse Link for Dataverse. So if you're using Synapse Link for Dataverse, uh, essentially, you know, we've provided one way for you to work with all your data. So the first step is upgrading to Synapse Link. If you're not on Synapse Link anymore, that's probably the first thing to do. So in the next section, let's quickly walk through what that upgrade process looks like and what benefits you can get from that upgrade. And of course, let's also talk about a little bit about the you know expected effort timelines. Now, this is not to not to give you a very detailed guideline. I mean, those 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 sessions are coming, but this is just to give you an overview, an idea of that what that transition looks like. So some of you may be using Exporter Data Lake today. Some of you may be using previous generation, uh, bring your own database, or you know previous generation integration technologies. So essentially, Synapse Link for Dataverse is generally available. It has been so for a long time. Export to Data Lake is generally available. It's been so for some time. The first step is we've combined these two together. So it's an evolution. It is that unification approach that you're familiar with. So first step is to upgrade to Synapse Link for Dataverse. Now, as you've seen, after you upgrade, to Synapse Link to Dataverse, you now have opened up a lot of opportunities to work with your data in Fabric directly. So what we mean by that is, so for an example, step one, upgrading to Synapse Link, you should think about it as a, a sort of, you have existing investments, you have existing pipelines that you have built, you know, they're being used by hundreds and maybe if not thousands of users in production. So the idea is, Let's upgrade to Synapse Link and keep those investments. You shouldn't have to rewrite those reports or rebuild those pipelines. Now, upgrading to Synapse Link, as we will show you, um, you notice that from demos, it's so much simpler, but we will also talk about some of the cost advantages that you're going to get. So think of upgrading to Synapse Link as a you know technical upgrade. You're going to get to keep your investments but at the same time, you're going to reduce um, a lot of your recurring costs. Now, the next step, you know, think of the transition to Microsoft Fabric as almost like a, hey, now we have these reports running. We made this technical upgrade. We are getting a whole lot of benefits. However, there are these new opportunities that are going to open up in terms of enabling low-code users, in terms of enabling new scenarios that you didn't have before. So I think that should be the way we think about this transition. So step one is upgrading to Synapse Link. Step two is opening up new scenarios. So uh, let's look at what those are uh, in a little bit of detail. And, uh, you know, the way to think about this is uh, when you upgrade to Synapse Link, you get to extend your existing investments. So it's the same data shape, minimal changes to existing pipelines. Um, so your net-net, uh, I mean, your benefit is you're going to reduce operational costs. Uh, of course, you have seen from the demo, it's easy to configure and manage, but that's, you know, a small part, I think. Um, of course, there's built-in integration, there's no impact to operational workload. So, you know, the, uh, but I think the biggest benefit is going to be in terms of like the, like the efficiencies, cost reductions that you're getting in terms of Delta Parquet, right? right. The, the underlying format. So, uh, and, and other key things also, you know, like we are going to cover many of these transition guidance in subsequent sessions, uh, which we are going to do as part of this series. Uh, so we'll cover that as well. Today we'll, we'll demo like how the cost saving, uh, comes from the Delta conversion. So, yeah. um, you know, the, as this has been in preview, many of the customers has kind of a, cons uh, a race concern that like, Hey, I need to pay for Delta conversion. So we'll kind of explain that scenario, like how the Delta conversion actually could save you costs compared to, you know, uh, add you uh, extra cost. So absolutely. So this is a detailed slide, uh, JJ, I think you're going to cover in coming sessions. So we're not going to go into the details. So, but the point is to let you know that there's a lot of material that will help you understand the TCO reduction. Uh, yeah. Now, of course, in terms of the, the transition to fabric, the idea here is that, you know, once you do transition to Synapse Link, 
you have these capabilities, you have these new features that are going to become available to you. Like for an example, no copy, no ATL. So your power users can securely work with the data in Fabric. But, you know, again, the way to think about this is you have these production reports that are running with export to data lakes and apps link, your business depends on it. Now, once you get that in place, the next step is going to be super easy. So let's focus a little bit on the total cost of ownership for upgrade to Synapse Link. Do you want to go ahead, JJ? Yeah, sure. Um, so as you saw, like I think the setup and configuration experience is further simplified and unified. Um, uh, in Expo to Data Lake, you had to bring many, um, uh, you know, additional components from the uh, from the Azure. Uh, now you you still have to have the storage account and some of those things, but like you can see the experience is very much unified and you know a simple click process rather than the uh, you know a multiple step process where you have to copy paste the configurations and all. Um, but we'll focus on this operating cost today. Uh, you know, from the data integration perspective. Um, you know, so. When you are using export to data lake, um, you know, uh, so these are some of the kind of bullet points, like where you, uh, what cost you are basically incurring uh, from the uh, export to data lake. Like you are using storage, Azure storage, you are uh, doing, uh, you know, data pipelines in, in many cases, uh, you know, you are uh, moving the data from Azure uh, Data Lake to Azure SQL or Synapse dedicated pool, or in many cases on-prem, uh, you are using maintaining data factory jobs and things like that. Um, you are doing um, uh, maintaining these data pipeline and all those things, right? Uh, what uh, will what what with the Synapse Link um, and many of these things are done just to gain performance and uh, you know. Uh, 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 because the performance on the CSV file uh, is not that great and the cost of the C CSV file querying is uh, is huge as well, right? So so what we are say, uh, you know, what we have seen with the with the Delta Lake, the storage cost, you, you usually get reduced to, you know, 60% uh, uh, because Delta format is a highly compressed, uh, Parquet format is highly compressed and columnar format and I'll show some examples of that today. Um, and you will probably pay uh, for you know a range of you know three hundred to three thousand uh, dollars you know through the Delta conversion, but we'll show the examples how some of these things you know can be can be saved from the uh, uh, you know uh, from uh, uh, the read cost which you are uh, uh, incurring on the Synapse serverless as well as uh, you know some of these data conversion jobs which you are maintaining. So Melinda, if you go to the next slide. I think that's a little deeper. Uh, I can show then uh, the demo. So if we go deeper into the operational reporting cost, you know, so at the high level again, um, you know, the query cost, operational cost come from three components, uh, right? Uh, the storage of the data, uh, export to data lake, as well as Synapse Link. Exporting data to your lake is, is part of the service. However, you pay for the Azure resources which you are using. Uh, so the storage cost is, uh, you know, is the one component of the data lake. And the storage cost is very economical. It's, uh, I believe, uh, $5 uh, or uh, per, ter per terabyte or something, uh, which is very economical. So it's, it's immaterial in many cases, but however you will see that it is a Delta format is highly compressed. Uh, so as an example here, what we saw, uh, a customers has a 650 gigabytes of CSV files and we are getting with Delta uh, roughly around uh, six x some compressions. And this is, I will show in a demo how we can do that. Uh, so in Ventrans, as example, which is a very common table uh, in many customers, uh, it's a big table. If we expose the data uh, in CSV, uh, you know, I believe I had 2 million rows just, uh, so it's a 1.3 gigabytes in, uh, in, in, um, uh, in CSV format. And if we do the same and do the delta conversion on sub same data it's become at 360 megabytes so it's six time compressions compared to you know csv what this six time compression mean is like you also read cost of your uh, uh synapse queries can be six time uh you know reduce uh, as example here uh operating cost of querying and reporting uh one of the customers you know basically 
exporting the data, you know, and using the serverless to do a lot of queries uh, for integrations workload as well as, uh, you know, operational reporting. And uh, the cost for the end workload was, you know, around $10,000 a month. This is just an example, um, you know. And if we apply this uh, things here, uh, you know, for uh, six times reductions, that's cost of the Synapse query can go just, you know, six times less because the... And key thing to understand here is, uh, you know, uh, Synapse serverless, the costing model is pay per, uh, you know, query kind of things, how much data is processed. So depending, uh, so you will notice that and we'll show that uh, here in the demo that, uh, you know, CSV, no matter what you do, you are basically querying the full data. And uh, when you do the parquet, uh, you know, it's compressed data. So you basically save uh, on, on that. So so that's the key thing. And the example what we took here, uh, you know, the customer case was per month, there was 2,126 terabytes of data scanned for the uh, Synapse serverless to query the CSV in their workloads. So this workload can vary, the compression can vary, but we wanted to kind of put an example how, um, you know, some of these things can help you reduce the operating cost. So with that, I will I'll also share my screen and uh, talk about an example where how I can calculate some of these costs. The first thing, first example I want to show, you know, hey, uh, how uh, how I can calculate the, the the cost of the Synapse serverless. So I have a query, and uh, you know, I, I will share this in the chat as well as in the you know, if uh, um, on on the uh, slides that this simple query, what it does is is basically uh, uh, you know, uh, serverless, uh, uh, you know, all the historical requests of serverless and amount of data process. If you run this query, it will basically tell you how much monthly cost uh, uh, approximately is you are having on the Synapse serverless today. Now, the next thing I wanted to show is the compression example. So here, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, here I have a uh, uh, export of data lake set up uh, in, in here. Um, and I have this table in Ventrans, right? Uh, and uh, this, if I go inside this in Ventrans table, I can see these are the CSV files. Um, and uh, in, in real example, many customers has much more CSV data in this. Uh, I'm in the Azure Storage Explorer, um, and if I click select, uh, you know, stats on the on this folder, it's basically saying that you know I have 1.9 GB of data uh, in this folder in Ventrans. The same data. When I export it to uh, you know Synapse Link uh, and have the delta conversion, uh, you can see here uh, in Ventrans data is exported and is is kind of available here in the partitions. Uh, these are uh, some smaller file, but if I go back here um, and uh, uh, do the same steps on here, um, uh, calculating the stats of this, you can see that this is just the 337. On MB of data, so this is where you can see that like this is a six type com six time compression of the same data. Uh, you know, it's it, it can vary, but you know, predominantly what we have seen that like the delta because it's a columnar format, compressed format, the saving of the you know storage itself uh, is, is kind of a huge, and it's just it's not just help with the cost, but also performance. You know, less data processing means uh, better performance on the Synapse serverless side and all that and read write contention issues and other things are uh, eliminated because it's a it's support an ACID property. We'll go deep into some of those kind of things uh, in the in subsequent sessions, but this is the kind of a fundamental of that. Uh, I'll also quickly try to cover a few other examples, you know, just to give a context of how how the the data process Synapse serverless, especially when you're using Synapse serverless to process data. Here I have some SQL queries, um, you know, uh, I have two databases, one which is created on the Delta Lake format uh, and another created on the CSV format from the export data lake perspective. If you see that, what I'm doing here is the count of this sales line, right? Um, you will uh, you will notice that, uh, you know, uh, when this count runs, uh, you know, you, the amount of data is going to uh, process is going to be uh, really small. Um, as you can see here, it's just fast scanned five megabytes of the data. And 
uh, as much more efficient from this count perspective and cost perspective that is just uh, five uh, you know megabytes of data uh, compared to uh, you know if I do the same query in on the CSV data. So let's see this the result of this. Here you can see that the data scan is 4200 megabytes. So even when a simple query is like count one, this, if it is a CSV, the Synapse serverless or any of these SQL engine has to scan all the data and then process it. Uh, amount of data is moving is one megabytes, but it's, uh, it still has to read the 4200 megabytes. And this is basically add the cost and performance, right? Here's another thing I want to show, uh, you know, if I do the, uh, so this is just on the compression side and how the data, uh, you know, is, is, is works. But if I have a query like this, where I'm just doing is summarizations of uh, data, sales line data by uh, data ID, ID, item ID, and sales ID. Um, in the, in the, uh, in the Delta Lake format, uh, uh, I have, uh, you know, I'm basically grouping and selecting a selected list of the columns. And you can see that the query responded much faster and it scanned only 81 megabytes of data, um, right? Uh, so this is much smaller data compared to the total data size of the things uh, uh, which you will see uh, in CSV. So if you run the same query in CSV, if your CSVs are 1.3 gigabytes, it's going to scan uh, 103 megabyte, uh, megabytes. Also, another aspect of it is like if I have a uh, you know query like this, um, let me try to run this. Where also not uh, like I showed you the the partition folders, right? So uh, with the Delta Lake, we are also partitioning the data. So partitioning is based on the created date time. Uh, so if I have the partition data like this, and I query this data, this is much, even much faster. What I did is partition on the fill. Uh, uh, 2023. So I'm only interested in 2023 uh, data. And as you notice here, it's just a scan two megabytes of data. So this is like, it's not just only improving the performance, but you're improving the cost of uh, when you query the data in this uh, Synapse serverless. So that's the, you know, kind of a wanted to show from the demo perspective, how the Delta Lake conversion uh, saves cost as well as improve performance and reliability of the Synapse serverless. Okay, uh, so that was it, Melinda. Like maybe we can go back to the slides. Thank you, JJ. Yes, thank you for that great demo. Now we've given you a lot of information. Um, what's the homework? Let's talk about the plan to transition. Um, how can you learn more? Uh, I know there's a lot of questions in the chat. I think we've uh, tried our best to answer them, uh, but how can you get answers after the session? So here's homework. We've given you a brief overview but there's a lot more to come and um, you know this deck is you can use this deck you can use this recording as an overview of uh, of the great things that are about to come um, of course the next thing is uh, just give it a try as you've seen in the demos it's so easy to configure so just give it a have a if you have a test environment you can use this it with the with your dev environments uh, tier one environments just give it a try um, and of course, there's a lot of patterns that have been published. We have a series of sessions, JJ, that uh, and Rich and uh, Fast Track team is driving. Um, you know, please review those. Uh, and then, of course, join the community. The next step after learning is, uh, of course, create a plan. Now, if you are using Export to Data Lake today, if you're in production, there are thousands of customers who are in production. Uh, you know, you can plan a transition. You have time until November last next year, 2024. So um, there's a lot of guidance coming. There's a lot of help coming to help you make this transition. Uh, just make a plan, pick some time, um, put it in the calendar, and then certainly you can work towards it. Now, if you're a customer voice who is not live with Export to Data Lake, but perhaps planning to go live with it in the coming months or so, it might be better if you adopt Synapse Link from the start. So that way you avoid a fast follow conversion. Not that fast follow conversions are bad. It's probably driven by your project plans and risks and so on and so forth. But um, that's that's sort of our guidance. Now, of course, there's a lot of benefits that you can look forward to. 
uh, as you've noticed, as J, uh, JJ has demonstrated, there's a lot of cost advantages, the simplicity that you can do. Um, and of course, in the future sessions, we're going to also talk about, um, you know, how you can optimize your architecture. Maybe, uh, maybe something that you can do as you do your upgrade or perhaps something that you can look forward to. So, um, JJ, anything to add here? No, I think this is good. And I think the transition guide, like the review patterns and transition guidance, uh, this is, uh, the link here is also, uh, linked on the, uh, the, the, the documentation page. This basically take you to the, uh, the GitHub where a presentation is there, um, and which presentations basically covers all the, all the different architecture patterns. And we are going to cover in the next three sessions, uh, those patterns and go deep dive into that. Uh, to to explain like how you will transition from uh, if you are using one pattern versus others. So, so that's that's those are the coming patterns. And the, uh, you know there are more resources. You know there is a lot of documentations on the Synapse link. Uh, wanted to clarify that you know we 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 started with the some context that Synapse link is was already available with the CE and Dataverse platform. Uh, and Power Platform. Now we are adding support of the finance and operations. So there is a lot of resource and a lot of documentations on the Synapse link already. Um, uh, so these are some of the documentations specific to export to data lake, uh, specific to FNO, but uh, other documentations are there as well. Like uh, one I would like to highlight is use manage identity with Azure, uh, the, the documentation here, which basically sec uh, provide you the guidance how to secure your storage account uh, when using the Synapse link. Uh, there's a lot of documentation on the Fabric. Uh, we have the Yammer group, uh, you know, uh, which has uh, more than, uh, you know, uh, several thousands of uh, uh, customers and partners participating on the daily basis. We host weekly office hours there. So join that community and it's a really a vibrant community. A lot of feedbacks uh, we get and, you know, uh, help from other community members. So it's just really, uh, you know, uh, important to join that, stay engaged, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, help us help you, um, a kind of a, uh, you know, a community there. We, we have these videos, uh, link as well, a synapse link, and these videos, like the TikTok video will be published as well, um, on the, uh, on the TikTok site, uh, but if we already have some setup, uh, videos, uh, step-by-step -step guidance on setting up, uh, videos on the, uh, the fabric. Um, as well. That's all I think we had, right, Melinda? Yes, that is pretty much what we had. Uh, so, Rich, um, if there's questions, uh, I mean, I know there were a few in the chat, but if there's questions, we can certainly take them at this point. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of questions. Um, we... There are indeed a lot of questions, yes. One item that there's a, a handful of questions about um, JJ and Melinda that would be helpful to, to touch upon again is what is the general availability date for Synapse Link and for Fabric? What's the relationship between those? Just to clarify, right? Uh, Synapse Link is generally available, but uh, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on on the plans for Fabric? Absolutely. So um, just again to reiterate, <laughs> yep. uh, Synapse Link for Dataverse has been generally available for more than two years. Um, Export to Data Lake became generally available early last year. Now, what we have done is uh, the teams have been working to combine these two products together. Now, Synapse Link for Dataverse with FNO data is already generally available. Uh, it became generally available early September. Uh, if you've been with us in the preview program, you will recall that we had a preview that's running for about a year. We addressed a lot of the gaps. So, uh, you know, although it became generally available in September, you know, we've been working on it with uh, active customers for some time. So upgrade to Synapse Link step, it's generally available. Um, Fabric, those new scenarios that we talked about, some of the new cool things that are coming, uh, it's in public preview. Um, you can try it. Uh, it's um, You can get a trial capacity. It's free. You can try it. Um, it's going to be generally available pretty soon. Uh, I hear there's a conference coming in a couple of weeks. It's called Microsoft Ignite, so you should uh, check it out. All right. And on that note, uh, we normally don't get into licensing details uh, in these discussions, but is there um, any pointers that, that you can offer as to um, how how this will be licensed and how customers will pay for this? 
Yeah, no, that's an excellent question. Um, you're right, Rich. Um, I'm not an expert on licensing. But in general, um, when customers buy Dynamics 365, they get entitlements to Dataverse and Power Platform. So there's a very complicated formula. I'm not very familiar, but in general, when you license Dynamics, you get Power Platform. You can also buy Power Apps, you get Power Platform. Synapse link for Dataverse is built into Power Platform. It's built into Dataverse. So like you get a quota of storage APIs, you know, you get a lot of consumption, you get a lot of uh, entitlements they're called. Uh, so Synapse link for Dataverse will consume those entitlements and uh, essentially you don't have to pay to have Synapse link for Dataverse. Just to uh, clarify one point on there, like, because that's, that was also a question, Melinda, uh, you know, the, when you are using Synapse link for Dataverse, when you're exporting data to data lake, there is yeah. no storage being copied. Data is not being copied from FNO database to Dataverse. There's no requirement for even dual write. The data get directly from FNO to Data Lake. Um, the entitlement is more about the APIs and services and you know what we are using uh, to export data. So that applies. Uh, so just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. No, that is a great clarification. Yes, yes. Um, I did not get that right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Uh, data is not copied into Dataverse. It will not consume your storage. It's just uh, compute. Uh, but the great thing about Synapse Link is uh, export to Data Lake had some limits. Like, for example, you could only have 450 tables and so on. Those limits go away. So now you can create as many Synapse Link links as you want. And in, in, in one link, you can keep up to 1,000 tables. So, you know, those limits go away. Maybe I don't know if you want to clarify on the fabric side. Like, when you use the fabric... Uh, that's how the uh, entitlement stories work, say, or maybe. Yes, maybe. yes. So uh, Microsoft Fabric actually is a low-code environment. It's a low-code, no copy, no ETL. Uh, we'll we'll probably go into it more uh, in a couple of weeks. We'll publish more details about this. So the idea here is as a low-code user, um, you don't need to bring storage. It will use Dataverse storage. Uh, so essentially, uh, your data inside Dataverse uh, is accessible from Fabric securely. Uh, so authorized users get to work with Fabric. There's no need to export data. Uh, now that feature will consume data or storage and we will provide more details in uh, in the coming weeks. There is one question I wanted to take uh, uh, um, ask whether having data in DAC integrations or Synapse Link API or flat file is preferred by customers. Um, uh, do EMS would change users billing and what customers would benefit through the Synapse Link solution is not clear. So just, just kind of throwing a light on that, like there are APIs uh, on the FNO platforms as well as the Dataverse platforms like ODATA API, is custom API, DMF, uh, you know, which has, uh, you know, kind of capability to export data, uh, you know, import data and all those kind of things. You know that's that's not going away. Like that's uh, there for integrations, uh, real time integrations, and some of those kind of scenarios, right? Um, if you have use cases of that APIs, uh, feel free to use it. This mechanism is more for bulk data and efficient data export, uh, efficient making data available efficiently. And this is a you know service where we can make it, uh, you know, uh, friction free for you. You don't have to configure anything. You just set up, select your tables and you have the highly efficient export of the data available so that your data is offloaded uh, from the ERP and you can use that for analytics, BI, uh, outbound integrations and some of those kind of scenarios. So it's really important to understand that, you know, you can use different pieces for different use cases, uh, not one solution fits all. Um, so APIs are going to be available. If the scenarios uh, demand for APIs, go for it. Uh, if this scenario is bulk data, uh, you know, kind of offloading from the ERP. Yes, I mean, these are the kind of uh, solutions. A couple of questions have been related to the process of selecting tables or entities or export. I think that there are a couple of things in the works there to improve that experience. Melinda, can you expand on that? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so what we have done, is we've enabled all the tables that customers have ever selected from export to data lake with PU62, which I believe is 10.0.38 maybe. 
earlier versions have lesser numbers of tables, but essentially we've been adding all the ready-made tables that customers have ever used with export to data lake so that you can straight away go select that. Now, your custom tables, um, you can enable that change tracking property in FNO and it'll show up in Synapse Link. Microsoft ready-made tables, for whatever reason, if you missed anything, you can also add a table extension and then it will appear. So essentially all the tables with export to data lake are enabled in Synapse Link. With the exception of four tables, those are some kernel tables that we're working on, if you know what those guys are. Uh, they'll be enabled in the coming, you know, two, three weeks. So all tables enabled. Entities. Now, if you're transitioning from BYOD, you may have built entities. You may have used some of the very complex legacy entities that we have. We do not support all entities at this point. So if you go to Synapse Link, uh, you know, it does support FNO entities, but we don't select all of them, support all of them now. Now we are working on enabling some of those entities uh, that work should, you know, I'm going to say December early next year so that you can select pretty much all the entities like you do in Export to Data Link. Uh, again, that should be a small, you know, concern if you're transitioning from BYOD, uh, but for Export to Data Link, uh, less so. Just to clarify there, Melinda, you said uh, that's December of this year and early next year is the correct, correct. time frame, correct? Yes. Yeah. yes. One thing I wanted to just clarify on the entities, you know, so uh, the reason we are in like not all entities are labeled, uh, there is a feature rovers and change tracking released on the entities as well, uh, you know, which basically validate that what entities are valid for the rovers and change tracking and those entities are allowed. Um, and, and the reason for that feature is like BYOD, many customers have raised these concerns of data inconsistency and performance problem with the BYOD. We do not want to repeat the same mistakes when we go and move the things uh, uh, through the Synapse Link. Synapse Link is materializing the entity. So, and materializing the entities incrementally and as it was uh, done by BYOD. So we want to make sure that like whatever entities, whatever the patterns, because Entities are multi-purpose in FNO. There are so much complex entities, uh, which is sometimes becomes very difficult for any engines to identify the incremental changes and cons inconsistent basis. So we are trying to be very careful on that, what entities are allowed so that we can make sure that it's when it's land and materialized in the lake, it's consistent. All right. And with that, we've reached uh, our time for today. So again, I want to thank everyone uh, in the audience for attending today. Thank our presenters, Melinda and Jilla, uh, for presenting today. And, and thank you all for, for your attendance and your questions. We will hang on and try to get through the remaining questions that, uh, that are out there in the chat. But we'll conclude the, the recording and presentation at this point and I hope you have a great